It only takes two lines of bash to escape from a Docker image, a CVE found by this guy, Felix. We're talking about the bug today, what it means for you if you use Docker and how you can fix it. Before we get into that, you know, what is a Docker image, right? A Docker image is this really cool piece of technology that allows you to ship code as basically a binary blob. But you're not just shipping the entire code, you're shipping the entire system. Originally, when you shipped code in this way, you had to kind of ship this thing known as a virtual machine, right? The problem with virtual machines is that it literally ships the entire operating system within the VM you have the user space code, but you also have the OS beneath it and a bunch of maybe other like drivers and stuff that are used to help interact with fake hardware. This is a very clunky way of shipping software. It's not easy for other developers to work on your code if you use a virtual machine. In 2013, Docker came along and they said, hey, instead of shipping the entire OS, why don't we just ship this thing that we'll call a container? A container is basically an image of just the code and then technology within the operating system allows the container to believe that it has access to the entire OS. We use this thing called a namespace in Linux to give the container the illusion that it has the entire file system, the entire process tree, all of the users, but in reality, it's in a bit of a sandbox, a jail, if you will. And so by using Docker containers or any kind of container technology, Docker is just one of them, what you get is two things. One, the ability to shift code in a way that it works on all instances of that container, but also you get container isolation, which means that the containers are not only isolated from each other, meaning that a container has to ask the OS for permission to talk to another image, the container is also us isolated from the OS, right? So beneath the OS or near the OS, you have maybe a file system, right? Or you have other processes. The container is in a jail. So unless you explicitly give it permission to touch other technologies, the container can't do this. Until this bug, until this CVE, uh, CVE 2025-9074. It's important to highlight, first of all, guys, this is not a vulnerability in Docker, the technology itself, right? This is a vulnerability in the implementation of Docker on a platform called Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is basically a way to run Docker and you get this cool little kind of GUI that allows you to see what containers are running, what images you have, et cetera. The way that Docker Desktop deploys the containers and the APIs it exposes to the containers is a vulnerability here. Now guys, look, while we can't stop zero days from happening, one thing we can do is make our application safer by using container images from today's sponsor, ChainGuard. Now guys, I know a lot of you do the right thing out there, right? You deploy your application using Docker images. The problem with a lot of these images is they come with a lot of bloat code. What ChainGuard delivers is minimal zero CVE container images that have an insane remediation SLA. Now, when I saw zero CVE myself, I was skeptical. I was like, how, how is that possible? The way this works is that ChainGuard removes all the code from the image and only ships the code that is required. If you look at the image size between chain guard and the traditional image, you have a 400 megabyte image down to 56 megabytes. And in terms of the CVEs in that image, chain guard's node image only has two low severity CVEs that are in busy box. There are literally hundreds in the normal image. And with their best in class SLA, if a critical bug comes out, they will have that fixed and published to their repo in seven days. Your team can build the application. Their team can fix the container. Guys, you can go use their images for free right now with this link. They have over 1,700 images with less code and less CVEs. Thanks again, ChainGuard, for sponsoring this video. So ultimately, to exploit this vulnerability and hop out of a Docker container, which again, I guess is like the entire purpose of the container is to container isolation, to jail the code that you're running, all you have to do is, from within a malicious container, talk to an API exposed on this IP address, which will allow you to start a privileged container where you are allowed to mount the C drive into that container and then gain access to the Windows host. Like it's that simple, right? It is truly a, a bug of the ages. I wanna highlight here, by the way, for people who wanna get into the security research, this is a bug that Felix found completely on accident. He was literally just inside of an image doing like an Nmap scan of what networks were exposed to the container. And like he saw, oh, this is a weird IP address, what is this? And he port mapped this IP address and he saw, oh, it has an API port. Oh, it's a Docker API. Can I like, you know, can I start images off the Docker API? And he kind of just kept going and eventually found this really crazy bug. So for those of you that are maybe getting, that are new in like the security research world or like the bug bounty world, a lot of people find bugs by just poking around and seeing what they can do. And sometimes assumptions are made poorly that allows you to do weird stuff like this, right? And so to exploit this vulnerability, literally all you have to do is from within a container, right? The threat model being that a malicious container enters your environment and something in it is running bad code, right? That malicious container, all it has to do is do a simple HTTP post request 
where it says, hey, I wanna create a new image. I wanna use the Alpine image. Oh, and by the way, when the image starts, I wanna create this new file. Oh, and also, can you make the image set up so that it binds mount slash host slash C to slash host root? If you're new to the world of like Weasel, for example, the Windows subsystem for Linux, mount host C is where Weasel has the C drive, the main drive for Windows mounted, right? So what you're doing here is you're saying, hey, mount the C drive of the host into host root. Oh, and then also arbitrarily write files into that host root, right? So what it's exposing here is that you're able to access the entirety of the C drive in Docker for Linux uh, through this vulnerability. And then what you do is you, you, know, you, you send that query off to this API here that is exposed, and then you get the uh, container ID from that container. You start the container, it runs the command, and then bada bing, bada boom, your, your files are written. And so when I saw this bug, I was kind of in disbelief, right? Bugs like this where you can just go download the software and run a few commands, they're always fun to try out to see if they actually work. And so I did have to modify the command here a little bit to work on my computer. I think because in the demo that Felix did, he ran in the Docker image as admin. I didn't want to do that. I felt like it was kind of like a, you know, not everyone has admin privileges on a computer. Maybe the image that runs won't have admin privileges, but I still was able to, using a non-admin container, write files to my local user uh, folder, right? So like if I had secret files in this computer that I didn't want other people to see, you know, the container would be able to read those and potentially take them out of the network, which is pretty bad, right? Uh, and so I, got, I don't know why my name is Fahi on this computer. The guys at Micro Center named the computer this random name and I still don't know the origins of it, right? Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is run a Docker image. So Docker run IT Alpine bin SH. What I'm doing here is emulating that I have a malicious container running that has bad code in it. And that malicious container is now gonna run an evil command, right? And that evil command is the command that is going to create this image that mounts the C drive to its host root and then writes a file, or it could read a file from my personal files out of the computer, right? So by running this wget, it's going to start the container with this image or with this command set up. And you'll see here on the top right, it's created the he he one, two, three file. And inside that should be the word pwned, right? And again, this is an emulation of malicious container running on Docker windows gets into your network bad commands are able to mount your C drive to the host root of the image, then do evil stuff. It could delete all your files. It could add extra files. It could maybe replace DLLs, code execution, stuff like that. And then so after finding this, Felix reached out to his buddy, Philippe. If I'm messing your names up, guys, I'm very sorry. Uh, and he did some additional research and found out that basically Windows is vulnerable without user authentication, without any prompting. This also works on Docker desktop for Mac OS, although the Mac OS version, because of how I guess Mac is structured, I'm not an, I'm not, I'm not an OS X guy, I don't really know. It doesn't allow the user to do things to the full extent that the Windows version does. There are like, I think a couple prompts that pop up while you're doing this, but if you click like, yes, sure, which you will do anyway, most of the time, um, you can have generally the same effect on Mac. And then the Linux version, common <laughs> Linux W, uh, is not affected by this. And so some key takeaways, guys, here from like a design standpoint, right? What Felix says is, you know, we should authenticate every control plane endpoint, even internal ones. I totally agree with this, right? From a pure like threat modeling perspective, if you consider from right to left, we have these varying levels of trust. You know, we don't necessarily have to trust every image we download, but the entire premise of an image is that like, or a containerization, is that it's isolated to a certain extent, right? And then to get deeper into our infrastructure, into our APIs, you have to have credentials, there has to be some other vulnerability we exploit to get in. But because of the design of this, right, the exposure of just this API with no authentication, this second border here really doesn't matter. And so basically every image you would have downloaded now lives in the same context, has the same authorities as the Docker engine that's running. It can read and write files at the same level as whatever user the engine runs as, which is pretty crazy. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Listen, if you're new to the security research world, go do what Felix did. Go find a thing. Go find a thing you think is weird. Go poke at it and see what bugs fall out. It's kind of a, a fun time, right? And then go check this video out about a similar thing that I think you will enjoy just as much. We'll see you over there. Oh, check out Chain Guard as well. Okay, goodbye.